The way I look at it is, is the public is rightly concerned about when they perceive that people are not being treated fairly. And when that, and when, when that comes down to race, it's understandable that people are concerned. The way I look at it is I firmly believe that systemic racism exists in, in public institutions right across our society in Canada and in the United States. And uh, we certainly have to do it. I, I don't believe that policing is any worse than any other institution. And I firmly believe that, that policing is on the right track to addressing it because the key to addressing it is through education and training. Do you think it's also a little bit of laziness over the years in hiring processes and in, in, you know, less than sufficient attempts to understand those minorities? I, I don't believe so. What, what I believe, it, that there, there's a line, I believe that it was uh, Bill Blair, the former chief of, uh, of, of the Toronto Police Service and now, and now a, a federal minister, he always used to say, we hire from the human race. And, and I think in policing, that's what we, what, what we strive to do is to hire from the human race, hire people that represent their, the, the community that they serve. And with that, you get all kinds of personalities. And I think the responsibility of police leaders is to provide the right training as the issues come up to, to address these issues as they come along and give their officers the best information available so they can go out, those, go out and do the job and try and overcome any biases that we all have as human beings. The current chief, Brian McCullough, and previous chief, uh, Jeff McGuire, I think also made some very good efforts to communicate with the public over the years. Is there a lack of communication now with these groups like the Niagara Region Anti-Racism Association? I'm not there and I haven't been there for three years, so I'm not sure of the current state of the relationships. But what I can say is the communication is vital and, it, and it's key. And, and the goal that in policing that you try to that you try to, to to meet is to form those relationships when when you're not in a crisis, so that when you when when tensions rise as they are right now, you've already got those relationships. The lines of communication are open, and I just think that 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 is so important. There are calls for defunding police forces across the United States, and that's found its way into Canada and here in Niagara. Do you think that's a wise decision to defund police forces? Well, once again, I think you have to understand when people use the term defunding, not everyone is, is referring to the same thing. I think that, that if, if uh, what a lot of people are referring to is in the, in the recent you know, spate of cases where People are critical of the fact that the police are the first responders to mental health crises. And then they say that because of that, the police should be defunded. I think on that, you won't get police leaders agreeing to be defunded, but you will get police leaders saying that resources are needed in other areas of the community because police officers shouldn't be the first responders to those types of things. So maybe a, distrib a, a distribution of funding across different uh, expertise, whether it be uh, mental health expertise or different things to take the pressure off the police. And I think that would go a long way to, to helping the problems that are existing right now. The Naga Regional Anti-Racism Association is also calling for the NRP to divest itself of the armored vehicle. Would that be something that would help to defuse some of this tension? I don't believe so. I, when I we made a pitch to the board when I was still working to 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 purchase that vehicle, the way I looked at that vehicle and the way that I still think about that vehicle is that it is a it is a another piece of equipment that is designed to keep people safe. It is not an offensive uh, weapon. It, people people had referred to it as a tank. It is certainly not a tank. It it can be used in in very few situations. Uh, in order to keep either an officer safe or a member of the public safe, depending on those, you know, those high uh, tactical based situations. But I, I really believe, though, the key to to the police having that vehicle is is helping the public to understand what it is. Uh, you know, uh, talk to groups about it. Let them know you have it. It's not a covert thing. And, and I don't think we should make any apologies for having the best equipment to keep the officers safe in high tension situations and to keep members of the public safe as well.